My sisters and brothers, as we begin this most sacred celebration, I ask you now to turn your attention to the baptismal font here at the entrance of the basilica. And we pray in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My sisters and brothers, the consecration and commitment of our brothers makes this day rooted in the commitment we all share as Christians through our sacrament of baptism. Let us pray that as this water is blessed, we may have formed in us by God's loving spirit the living likeness of Jesus Christ. Holy and eternal God, we give you thanks for our creation and redemption. We ask you to send your living spirit upon this water and upon all here present who have found rebirth in the font of your life. Renew the living spirit of your life in our brothers who this day offer themselves to you with a willing and joyful spirit. We ask you this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who willed that the grace of baptism should flourish in these your servants, so that they may strive to follow you more closely in the footsteps of your Son, grant, we pray, that constantly seeking evangelical perfection, they may add to the holiness of your Church and increase her apostolic zeal. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first book of Kings. Elijah went a day's journey into the desert until he came to a broom tree and sat beneath it. He prayed for death, saying, This is enough, O Lord. Take my life, for I am no better than my ancestors. He lay down and fell asleep under the broom tree 
But then an angel touched him and ordered him to get up and eat. He looked, and there at his head was a hearth cake and a jug of water. After he ate and drank, he lay down again. But the angel of the Lord came back a second time, touched him, and ordered, Get up and eat, else the journey will be too long for you. He got up, ate, and drank. Then, strengthened by that food, he walked 40 days and 40 nights to the mountain of God, Horeb. There he came to a cave where he took shelter. Then the Lord said, Go outside and stand on the mountain before the Lord. The Lord will be passing by. A strong and heavy wind was rending the mountains and crushing rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind, there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake, there was a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. After the fire, there was a tiny whispering sound. When he heard this, Elijah hid his face in his cloak and went and stood at the entrance of the cave. A voice said to him, Elijah, why are you here? He replied, I have been most zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts. But the children of Israel have forsaken your covenant, torn down your altars, and put your prophets to the sword. I alone am left and they seek to take my life. The Lord said to him, Go, take the road back to the desert near Damascus. The word of the Lord. Thank you. 
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, Jews demand signs and Greeks look for wisdom, but we proclaim Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles, but to those who are called, Jews and Greeks alike, Christ, the power of God, and the wisdom of God. For the foolishness of God is wiser than human wisdom, and the weakness of God is stronger than human strength. Consider your own calling, brothers and sisters. Not many of you were wise by human standards. Not many were powerful. Not many were of noble birth. Rather, God chose the foolish of the world to shame the wise. And God chose the weak of the world to shame the strong, and God chose the lowly and despised of the world, those who count for nothing, to reduce to nothing those who are something, so that no human being might boast before God. It is due to him that you are in Christ Jesus, who became for us wisdom from God, as well as righteousness, sanctification, and redemption, so that, as it is written, whoever boasts should boast in the Lord. The Word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. And with A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, As the Father loves me, so I also love you. Remain in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy might be in you and your joy might be complete. This is my commandment, love one another as I love you. No one has greater love than this to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I no longer call you slaves because a slave does not know what his master is doing. I have called you friends because I have told you everything I have heard from my Father. It was not you who chose me, but I who chose you and appointed you to go and bear fruit that will remain, so that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give you. This I command you, love one another. The Gospel of the Lord. My brothers and sisters, how blessed are we to be in this basilica today as our two young brothers, Adam and Patrick, publicly profess their final vows within the congregation of Holy Cross. Adam and Patrick, our own Holy Cross constitutions describe well what you are doing today. Constitution 5 states that your vows essentially are an act of love for the God who first loved you. Further, our constitutions remind you that this love is not to be kept solely within you, for your love is to spill over to the service of your brothers and sisters. So when in a few minutes you profess your final vows of poverty, celibacy, and obedience before God and all of us, Paragraph 45 of our Constitutions reminds you that you are to be, quote, prophetic signs as sojourners in this world, living your lives in such a way that you call into question the fascinations of our world, fascinations of power, pleasure, and wealth. Adam and Patrick, you've already begun that journey, that sojourn in Holy Cross. Adam, your sojourning has taken you from your native England to serve in Holy Cross parishes in Mexico and the United States, in the South Bend area working with grieving children, grieving the loss of loved ones, also providing financial crisis counseling to those struggling financially, and on this campus, guiding your young brothers at the old college program and now serving Holy Cross at St. Stanislaus and Holy Cross parishes in South Bend. Pat, born in New York, raised in Colorado, your sojourn in Holy Cross has led you to teach in Uganda, to serve the marginalized in Portland, Oregon, mentoring at-risk students in South Bend, Indiana, serving the sick in a hospital in Colorado, leading retreats on this campus and serving parishioners in Arizona and Mexico, and now guiding the residents of Kehoe Hall on this campus where you serve as rector. Yes, you've both been called and you have served well in your sojourn. 
but the constitutions call us not just to be sojourners in life, but to be prophetic sojourners. To be a prophet, to challenge by words, and really more importantly by actions, is not easy. In the first reading you chose for us today, the prophet Elijah found being prophetic just simply to wear him down. In frustration, he said to the Lord, take me, take my life. Yet the Lord would have none of it, saying, get up, eat and continue your journey. The Lord reminded Elijah that he, the Lord, would accompany him on his journey. And that's how you are both challenged and assured today. Your sojourn, your journey, it will not always be easy. And there will be moments where you will feel like Elijah saying, enough, I can't continue anymore. In those moments, listen as Elijah did to the Spirit of the Lord, who will speak to you deep in the silence of your hearts and saying the same thing, get up and eat and continue your journey. And what will you eat that will nourish you? Well, today, as you publicly proclaim your vows and your commitment to live prophetic lives, you will be nourished at this altar, partaking of that which most nourishes us, all of us on our journey, the body and blood of Christ. As our constitutions remind us in paragraph 27, it is in the sharing of the bread and cup that we are fortified for the journey. Adam and Pat, my brothers, may you always have the spiritual wisdom to listen to the silence of your hearts, to hear the Lord beckon you to take of his body and blood, and so to continue your journey as prophetic sojourners for he is with you. Yes, being prophetic as your sojourn is not easy, but the gospel you chose to have read to us today reminds that you did not choose this role. You were chosen for the role. And in the second reading you chose, St. Paul reminds us, you were chosen despite your weaknesses despite your doubts or struggles. For as true Holy Cross men, we know that when we face the cross in our own lives, it is there, ironically, we are empowered to move forward with confidence. With the power of Christ within you today, today you walk, you sojourn, in the footsteps of that great band of men who walked before you, that band we call the Congregation of Holy Cross. And because Christ walks with you, you dare to walk with others. Our Holy Father in Brazil recently, for the World Youth Day, echoed this very same thought. He said to the bishops of Brazil, quote, we need a church capable of walking at people's sides, of doing more than simply listening to them. We need a church that accompanies them on their journey. And unless we are capable of winning people's hearts, of walking with them in the night, of dialoguing with their hopes and disappointments, of mending their brokenness, what hope can we have for our own present and future journey? And to the millions of youth assembled there, the Holy Father said, do not be afraid to go out and bring Christ to every area of life, to the fringes of society, even to those who seem farthest or most indifferent, because Christ walks with us we can walk with others in their struggles, in their desire to know the Lord. Adam and Pat, 
as you listen to the wisdom of the scripture readings you have chosen, to our own constitutions, and to the words of our Holy Father, you will now make these final vows, committing yourselves to be prophetic sojourners. As you make these vows, you are surrounded by your families who first lovingly taught you about the ability to walk with the Lord. You are surrounded by friends who have walked with you along the way. You are surrounded by your brothers and sisters in Holy Cross and by the men of your province who beckon you to walk with them in this great band of men that we call the Congregation of Holy Cross. Adam and Pat, we thank you profoundly today for your willingness to walk prophetically, to profess these vows publicly. And all of us, your families, your friends, and Holy Cross, we pledge to pray for you so that each day you may get up, eat of the sacred meal, and continue your journey as prophetic sojourners. May God bless you and guide you today and each step of that journey. Let those who are to make profession of perpetual vows please rise. Mr. Adam David Booth of the Congregation of Holy Cross. Present. Mr. Patrick Eugene Reedy of the Congregation of Holy Cross. Present. Adam and Patrick, what do you ask of God's Church and of the Congregation of Holy Cross? To persevere all the days of my life in the service of the Lord, communion with my brothers in Holy Cross, with whom I wish to live and die. My sisters and brothers, God has called these men to follow Christ as religious of Holy Cross. In our joy now, let us express our thanks for this sign of God's love. Adam and Patrick, in baptism you have already died to sin and have now have been consecrated to God's service. Are you now resolved to commit yourselves forever to single-hearted intimacy with God, to trusting dependence upon God, and to willing surrender to God? I am resolved. Are you resolved in consecrated celibacy to love with the freedom, openness, and availability that can be recognized as a sign of the kingdom. I am resolved. Are you resolved in consecrated poverty to seek to share the lot of the poor, to unite in their cause, trusting in the Lord as provider? I am resolved. And are you resolved in consecrated obedience to join with our brothers in community and with the whole church in search for God's will? 
Are you resolved to give your whole life over in generous service to all our people, to serve them out of your own faith that the Lord has loved us and died for us and risen for us, and that he offers us a share in his life, a life more powerful and enduring than any sin or death? I am resolved. May Almighty God grant you the grace to fulfill what you resolve through Christ our Lord. My brothers and sisters, let us pray through the intercession of Mary and all of the saints that God the Almighty may bless and strengthen these servants who have been called to follow Christ in the religious life. Please kneel. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy. and Benedict, Ambrose, Monica, Augustine, Thomas, Aquinas, Frederick, Osmanon, Claire, Francis, and Dominic, Ignatius of Loyola, Alphonsus, Laguari, 
faithful to your church. Make all peoples one in trust and peace. Strengthen us in your service. Bless this chosen man. Bless this chosen man and make them holy. Consecrate them in your service. Jesus, Son of the living God. Almighty and eternal God, listen to the prayers of your people. May the fire of your Holy Spirit purify your servants from all sin and make them burn with the fervor of divine life. We ask you this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Adam and Patrick, I can attest to your willingness to follow in the footsteps of our holy founder, Blessed Basil Moreau, and to embrace forever our religious life. I invite you now to come forward and in the presence of this community and almighty God to publicly profess your vows. I, Adam David Patrick Booth, CSC, kneel in the presence of Jesus Christ, the Son of God and my Lord, in the assembly of his church, amid the congregation of Holy Cross, and before you, the Reverend Thomas J. O'Hara, Provincial Superior of the United States Province of Priests and Brothers to profess my dedication and my vows. I believe that I have been called by the Father and led by the Spirit through the witness of many generous souls to offer my life and my life's work in the service of the Lord for the needs of the church and of the world. Therefore, I make to God forever the vows of chastity, poverty, and obedience according to the constitutions of the Congregation of Holy Cross. Through the merits of the most sacred heart of Jesus, May the God who allows and invites me to make this commitment strengthen and protect me to be faithful to it.
Adam, in the name of the church and of the congregation of Holy Cross, I accept your vows. May God, who began this good work in you, bring it to completion. I, Mr. Patrick Eugene Reedy, CSC, kneel in the presence of Jesus Christ, the Son of God and my Lord, in the assembly of his church, amid the congregation of Holy Cross, and before you, Reverend Thomas J. O'Hara, CSC, Provincial Superior of the United States Province of Priests and Brothers, to profess my dedication and my vows. I believe that I have been called by the Father and led by the Spirit to offer my life and my life's work in the service of the Church for the needs of the Church and the world. Therefore, I make to God forever the vows of chastity, poverty, and obedience according to the constitutions of the Congregation of Holy Cross. May the God who allows and invites me to make this commitment strengthen and protect me to be faithful to it. Patrick. In the name of the Church and of the Congregation of Holy Cross, I accept your vows. May God, who began this good work in you, bring it to completion. Please stand. Lord God, source of holiness and growth in your church. All creation owes you its debt of praise. In the beginning of time, you created the world to share your joy. When it lay broken by Adam's sin, you promised a new heaven and a new earth. You entrusted the earth to care of men and women to be made fruitful by their work. Living in this world, they were to direct the steps to the heavenly kingdom. By your sacraments, you made us your children and welcomed us into your church. You distribute among us the many gifts of your spirit. Some serve you in chaste marriage. Others forgo marriage for the sake of the kingdom, sharing all things in common with one heart and mind in the bond of love. They become a sign of the communion of heaven. Father, we pray you now send your spirit upon these servants of yours who have committed themselves with steadfast faith to the wards of Christ your Son. Strengthen their understanding and direct their lives by the teaching of the gospel. May the law of love rule in their hearts and concern for others distinguish their lives so that they may bear witness to you, the one true God, and to your infinite love for all people by their courage in daily trials May they receive, even in this life, your promised hundredfold and in the end an everlasting reward in heaven. We ask you this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Adam, receive the image of the crucified. He saved the world by his cross and invites you to share in his mission of service for his people. Follow in his footsteps, and you will come to share in the glory of his resurrection. Patrick, receive the image of the crucified. He saved the world by his cross and invites you to share in his mission of service to his people. Follow in his footsteps and you will come to share in the glory of the resurrection.
Adam and Patrick, we confirm that you are now one with us forever as members of the Congregation of Holy Cross, sharing all things in common with us now and in the future. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And with your spirit. Let us now offer one another the sign of peace.
Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be made acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive the gifts and intentions of your servants, O Lord, and confirm in your love those who profess these evangelical counsels through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. It is truly Amen. right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. He is the unblemished flower who sprang from the root of the Virgin and declared the pure of heart blessed, teaching by his way of life the surpassing worth of chastity. He chose always to hold fast to what is pleasing to you and becoming obedient for our sake even unto death, he willingly offered himself to you as a perfect and fragrant sacrifice. He consecrated to a fuller service of your majesty those who for the love of you leave all earthly things and promise they would find treasure in heaven. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the death of the Lord until you come again. The 
Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of his saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain the inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with all of the saints, St. Andre and blessed Basil Moreau, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, Kevin, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Strengthen in their holy resolve, O Lord, that these your servants who today have bound themselves to you perpetually to the sacred bonds of religious profession and grant that they may show forth in your church the new and eternal life purchased for us by Christ's redemption. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. For through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on your sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
and drink of his blood. You shall not have life within you, and I will
Let us pray. Having received with reverence the divine mysteries, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, to inflame with the fire of the Holy Spirit these your servants, bound to you now by an act of sacred offering, and to admit them forever to the company of your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. There are no announcements, but I would like to take this opportunity to thank all who prepared for this beautiful liturgy, for those who proclaimed the ward, for those who served at the table, and for the Notre Dame liturgical choir, who clearly uh, inspired us with, with your singing at this liturgy, and most especially to Adam and Patrick, who made this day an event for all of us. So thank you all. Adam and Patrick come before the altar of God now to receive his blessing. I ask all of you in the congregation to raise your hands and join me in the blessing of our brothers. God inspires all holy desires and brings them to fulfillment. May always keep you brothers, faithful to the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ and to the evangelical life in Holy Cross. Amen. May God keep you single-hearted in your consecrated celibacy, generous in your poverty, and wholehearted in your obedience. Amen. May God always keep you steadfast in faith, joyful. And may all of you who have partaken in this celebration receive the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth. The Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Amen. Yeah.